YouTube. My name is Josh. Welcome to JDM Right Hand Drive, and this is our 2021 Mazda CX-9. The thing about the Mazda CX-9 is it is 100% manufactured in Japan. So many other of the Japanese auto manufacturers who have outsourced their vehicle design and assembly to other countries like Mexico or Canada, North America. Um, Mazda has went back to the basics. They separated ties from Ford. I believe back in 2013 if I'm correct and they went back to the drawing board they designed this car in-house it actually uses a six-speed automatic transmission designed by Mazda um, this is the all-wheel drive model makes the 2016 or newer Mazda CX-9 so special as it's pow powered by the Skyactiv 2.5 liter direct injection Skyactiv G turbocharged and intercooled engine making 227 horsepower and 310 foot-pounds of torque, which is freaking awesome. Um, this thing has more torque than our old Acura MDX V6 did, and it gets better fuel economy, um, up to 26 miles a gallon on the highway. Here's your little, your little turbo back there. Works really good, gives you a lot of torque off the line, which we'll see here when we go for a test drive. I like my sports car, so to have an SUV that's turbocharged and somewhat affordable, I think is very desirable, and if you guys are curious, how the intercooler works. You actually have your intercooler down here. So this little aluminum guy, that's your intercooler. And it feeds out and up into the turbo, comes th through the- uh, I don't have friends, I got family. Intake here, or this is your mass airflow sensor intake manifold. So pretty, pretty cool design. I really like the uh, front end of the car. The Kodo design language is very nice. I think Mazda did a really good draw job on the drawing board. And this is the Touring Plus package, so we do have LED lights here. And I'll show you that. Let's close the hood. But I love the front end. I love how this all kind of swoops around the side. It looks aggressive, like it has some active arrow, how it looks even though it's non-functional. But it's a good looking, uh, good looking car. I like the front. The front grill, the way it sticks out, and that coated design grill. I like the redesign on the 2016, and it's just been a good car. We've owned this car for 10 months. Um, yeah, it's a clean looking car. I like the plastic cladding, it helps it keep clean. 18 inch wheel stock, which is really nice. Um, Yokohama Geo Landers on here, which are, they do pretty good. We took it out in the snow. We've been driving this car for about 7,000 miles. Front turn signals are incandescent bulbs, as you can see but the headlights are LED. The nice turn signal on the mirror as well. In the back, these are incandescent turn signals as well as you can see in there. Overall, it's a very pleasing design. It looks, uh, I think, way more luxury than any other Mazda does. On this Mazda 6, that's uh, 2016. I've had this for two years. It's been bulletproof, perfect car. Um, so after owning uh, the first generation Acura MDX, which the transmission failed on us in nine years. We owned the sec second generation M MDX uh, with the SHL wheel drive. The transmission failed on that car in six years. It was going bad. So we decided to go away from Honda, which I've always loved, Honda SUVs and Honda cars. But I wanted to go with Mazda because, like I said, it's designed in Japan. Transmission's built in Japan. And I wanted to try a different brand and see if I can get something that lasts like 250,000 miles. That's the goal. So let's go ahead and hop in the car. We'll show you the interior, then we'll go for a test drive. It comes with your Mazda Intelligent Access Key. So all you need to do is have this uh, in your pocket. Up and push the door to unlock it. And then open. Let's go ahead and get a good look inside here. The door does have a really nice thunk sound. It sounds really solid. It's nice materials. It's a uh, soft touch here as well as up on the dash is all soft touch. Soft touch here. Um, that's really nice. I like the uh, the chrome accents on the inside. This one, like I said, does have the upgraded Bose audio system. And then the big thing for 2021 on the CX-9, they added the larger, I think it's a 10.2 inch LCD screen, which looks really nice. It looks like a, a new tablet or a new smartphone. So it's it's up to, I think, today's standards for resolution quality and stuff like that. Coming into the steering wheel, it's really nice leather. Has all your different controls for radio station, volume, your speaker, Bluetooth, 
Um, this has adaptive cruise control, so you can set the cruise and set the distance you want. It works really good. Um, yeah, it's it's nice to drive. This has lane keeping assist, which we'll show you when we get out on the road. It'll have a little indicator. The string will, will vibrate and it'll put you back in the lane, which is cool. You've got your uh, blind spot monitoring here. See those little marks on the mirror maybe? I know I can see them. I don't know if you guys can. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a nice cabin. Has the uh, auto dimming rear view mirror. These are all your function buttons in the middle. So you've got dual climate control, heated seats. Um, if you go to the um, touring or the grand touring, you get the ventilated seats. The touring does not have that. And really the only thing that I don't like about the interior is just the center console area. Um, I think this kind of looks cheap like this piano finish it can get scratched which you can see there's little scratches and stuff and I think they could have done something different like this maybe just this type of material or maybe just like a matte black plastic or something I don't know that's uh, really my only gripe of the interior center console is nice um, you can 50 50 split it you've got USB power in here for your phone that's your SD card navigation upgrade spot and the wireless charging pad, like I said, is right here. So you can put your phone there. If you have an iPhone or any wireless charging phone, it'll charge right there. Cabin storage is kind of a little small in this compartment. I wish it was a little bit bigger. But uh, yeah, overall, very nice interior. The box is damped when it comes down. It comes down nice. It's lined with like a felt material. Pretty, pretty good storage in here. And all the windows are auto up down for all four so just one push up or down and they go completely up or down some other suvs rear windows don't go down very far because of child safety these ones go down almost all the way so that's nice door cards are nice it's all good materials if you go to the touring uh, or the grand touring over the touring you get leather wrapped here and a little bit nicer um, finishes here but i thought the vinyl was nice and i liked the price of this car and the touring is kind of like the grand touring on the cx5 this is 100 percent genuine real leather it's very nice very plush the seats are on the smaller side so like myself i'm six foot one 200 pounds and i sit in here and i'm like pretty snug in here um the mdx the interior was definitely um, much bigger and i have a lot more like slosh back and forth so somebody that's larger may find this to be kind of uh restrictive but um, i fit in it good and my kids and wife fit in it good. And you got your lift gate here. You got traction control, your parking sensors. I'm not sure what this is. Underneath this is your fuel door and your hood pop. This does also have an auto hold feature. So if you want to uh, come to a stop at a red light and you don't want to hold the brake, this will hold the brake for you. And then electronic parking brake, of course. Each door pocket, you have a cup holder and some storage. The passenger side, you've got 12 volt power here as well. Seats are all electronic for the front. Let's make our way to the back of the vehicle. So coming on in, door opens nice and wide you've got a nice wide entry point I can easily get in here like I was telling you the uh, premium package we went with has the nice rear visors here so if you have children or something in the back you don't have to worry about the sun shining in their eyes especially with little infants sitting in the uh, seat here but um, yeah this this has the captain chairs which we like um, these are very nice especially for adults you can get in here and it makes it accessibility to the rear row a little bit easier to get back in here Rear row's a little tight. Um, we've got 17 and 15 year old kids. They can fit back there, um, but you have to really slide these front seats forward. They can't adjust, so I've got it all the way forward. You can slide them back. So they're on rails, which is nice. And climbing on in, you guys can see, I've got plenty of leg room here between me and the front seat. That's where I was sitting before. And this is all nice leather back here as well. Stitching, I think, is not the finest stitching. It kind of looks a little janky, I think. It's really the only um, fit and finish thing I've seen on the vehicle that I found that doesn't look as nice as the rest of the fit and finish It's just I don't know. Maybe somebody was working in the factory that wasn't as effective at doing seams and stuff, but um, The rear has nice vents. You have climate control your own fan AC functions. You have two cup holders 
Um, the upgraded feature for the premium package, you get the extra USBs back here, which is nice for the kids for their phones, tablets, whatever they're doing to entertain themselves. These armrests here, these are cool. They come down, you can adjust them, kind of like Audi's armrests. It's just it's a comfortable place to sit and spend time back here, even as an adult, as a kid, it's really nice. You can see how effective these rear sun shades are. I really like these, they're cool. You want to come out to your car and take a nap on your lunch break and tilt the seat back, it makes it a little bit darker back here. And for road trips with the little ones, it's just nice if you want to get that sun out of your face. Yeah, I wish that they would have done is continued with the tinting in the front and had the tint on the driver and passenger side windows just like the rest of the passenger and rear cabin is all tinted. The lighting is incandescent bulbs front and rear. Safety grab handles in the front and rear as well as hangers for tying up your suits or anything like that. Getting into the rear, this is a soft touch material on the top. Soft touch here. It's basically the exact same as the front. You have the nice handles with the chrome accents. You have a cup holder spot and some storage down below. Little map pockets in the back if anybody wants to use those for like clean wipes like we do or whatever type of storage. Rear seats are leather just like the front. So very nice, really good stitching, nice soft leather. Um, I think this is way nicer than the leather that was even in the Acura MDX on the last generation we had. Go ahead and tilt this seat forward. So you guys can kind of get a little bit better look to the rear seat. Um, the rear seat is a uh, vinyl material. This is not leather, but it is nice. It's soft. It's comfortable. Um, plenty of cushion in there. You got some cup holders back here as well as a USB input for your phones or tablets, whatever you're using. And you got audio speakers here, over there, and this side is exactly the same. So plenty of space. Um, you got three point safety. Restraints back here, just like any other of the seats in the car. It came from the factory with the Mazda floor mat. So you got floor mats that cover all the way front, back, all the way around. So have the automatic lift gate. So you, all you have to do is hold the open button. And there you go. It's nice if you're coming out with your groceries. Um, even with the third row seats up, you still have plenty of space in the back to fit like five or six bags of groceries or golf clubs. And then if you want to fold them down, you just push this lever. They easily go down. And you've got quite a bit of storage in the back now, so you can fit whatever you need. Um, they have nice little cutouts here for extra space on each side. You can have a power outlet here, which is nice if you're camping, you want to plug in an air mattress or something like that, like a pump or something, you can do it from the front or the rear. Either way, and you've got a little under compartment, which we keep some emergency stuff like chains, water, first aid kit, that type of stuff. You want to fold the front seats down, you have all this space of storage. So I brought home my huge toolboxes that are in the garage. They're easy to put in here. And those are like, I don't know, boxes probably six feet long. So you can put a piece of plywood or whatever back here. Look how the tailgate goes up because if you're camping or if you're at the beach or something like that, you want to come and sit on the tailgate here. Easily sit and have all this coverage to block all the rain, which is cool. Your back parking sensors here. I'll show you the ones up front. Here's your front parking sensors here, as well as there. I like the design of the car. The only thing that I think looks a little goofy myself is 18 inch wheels are great. I think the offset, I think they could have stuck out a little bit more because they're just kind of tucked in a little bit too deep. And I can understand the Mazda's logic. They probably wanted to keep all the dirt and stuff from kicking out over the side of the car at least like these little side claddings uh, protect keeping the car clean. But I just think they could have went a little bit more aggressive like BMW or Audi or any of the upper end European manufacturers. Their wheel fitment definitely is not tucked in like that. This is how it used to be in the early 2000s for those brands. I think Mazda could have had this stick out another inch. That way it looked clean and tucked and I think that would make it look a little bit more sexy, but it looks still looks very good. So yeah, this is the fuel economy numbers, 20 city, 26 highway, combined of 23. Um, crash star, overall vehicle crash star, safety rating, five stars, um, frontal crash, side crash, rollover. Vehicle assembly point, Hiroshima, Japan, origin, country of origin, um, engine Japan, transmission comes from Japan, so it's all built and designed, made in Japan. So this is our Touring uh, Snowflake White Pearl. Standard equipment, it comes with all these different features. 18-inch um, wheels, which is nice. Like I said, 20, 227 horsepower, 310 foot-pound of torque. 
50 state emissions legal. This has the Sky, the iActive all-wheel drive. And um, the only upgraded feature that we went with, we added the Tour Premium package for $2,000. Gives you the Bose audio system, the power moonroof, LED fog lights up front, um, Sirius XM satellite radio, three month trial. And the big thing that we liked was the sun shades for the second row, the front rear parking sensors, wireless phone charger for like the iPhone, which is really cool. Um, you get USB outlets in the back and captain's chair. Enough talking, let's go ahead, I'll hop in the car and I'll give you guys my driving impressions of it. To start the car, all you can do is put your foot on the brake, hit the start button, there you go, starts right up. So what you guys are probably the most curious about, just like I was, is the acceleration fast enough. So let's go ahead and step on it and find out. And yes it is. This thing has 310 foot-pounds of torque with premium fuel in it. It does have the option to put standard fuel in it and it will lose a little bit of horsepower and a little bit of torque, but if you want to save money at the pump and you don't care about the power as much, you can easily do that. Um, this car is around 4,400 pounds with the all-wheel drive in it, and it's very light, it's very sporty, it handles very well. The suspension is soft, it's, it's far more comfortable than our old, we had a 2009 MDX, and the spring rate on this is, is spot on. The suspension, it's, it's soft, it's comfortable, it soaks up the bumps, it feels definitely more luxury. If you drive a CX-5, um, that feels cheap and it feels tinny and it doesn't feel anything like this. This is a completely different driving experience. I've driven a couple of BMW X5s and like Audi Q7s and it reminds me more of how those vehicles feel. So let's take it for a little drive. I'm just going to do a little loop around the area that I live. We'll kind of go on some windy back roads as well as getting on the highway and kind of test the system and see how it works. And I hope you guys enjoy the drive. Brakes are very good. The six speed automatic transmission I think is very good. I think it matches the vehicle perfectly. The shifts are, are nice and fast and smooth. You can even put the shifter into manual mode if you want to change gears yourself. It'll give you a nice gear indicator in the instrument cluster and you can push forward to go down, which is nice because if you're braking, you're gonna automatically want to push forward. So it's nice that they've got the direction and the proper orientation and then pull back to upshift. But through the corners, this car is very nice. It's nice and smooth, it's comfortable. It bothers me at the Mazdas is I don't like how the mirror is mounted so far back on the door. I wish it was more on the A pillar because I kind of find it sometimes harder to see because the mirror is too close to me where if it was farther away, it would give me a better perspective of like depth of, of view basically. Other than that, I love the interior. Uh, no other complaints. Driving the car, super smooth, cruising at uh, 35 miles an hour, low RPM rev range. You don't even hear the engine. The cabin is super quiet. It's just a really enjoyable time to spend, spend driving wherever you're going to your destination. I like all the controls. I can turn the fan up and down. Some of them you have to cycle all the way from low to high before it goes back to low. Yeah, this car drives nice, handles good, it's smooth, it's quiet, it's comfortable. It feels like a luxury car, even though it's Mazda. Most people don't consider Mazda to be a luxury brand. And I think that's why Mazda has done so well with the sales on the Mazda 6 and the CX-9. Um, a lot of people are just really discovering them as a, a good value and a very reliable brand. And So I wanted to test with you guys the acceleration. We're in gravel here, um, just normal drive mode has plenty of traction it's smooth over these bumps i took it in the snow up to crystal mountain with my family we had five of us in here and the car easily went through six inches of snow in the parking lot no issues um, i know it is a front wheel drive bias and then there's a uh, electronic like magnetic plate that engages the rear wheel drive to make it four wheel drive and it, it works good I haven't 
push it in the mud, which I probably never will, and I won't do anything besides go snowboarding. So all I need is a car that will do good in the rain, get my wife and my kids safely home from wherever they're going, and uh, not have to worry about them. That's what I why why we went with the CX-9 this time. Um, I did a bunch of research on it. I couldn't find anything bad, and after owning the Mazda 6 that I've had and putting 20,000 miles on that, that car's been bulletproof, and I just wanted to drive Mazda, and I'm glad I did. Um, we did drive the CX-5 at first, and like I said, it was kind of disappointing. It's nice. Um, it does have a better price point if that's what's in your range, but it's it's a different, completely different driving experience from this. But let's get up into these corners up here. Um, this thing is what I like. I'm an enthusiast. I drive a 500 horsepower Nissan Skyline. I like to drive fast. I like to go to the track. This thing, I can still, if I had to drive it back and forth to work or do something with it, it's still fun and it's engaging for me to drive. The brakes are nice on these corners. The car stays planted, doesn't have a lot of body roll, soaks up the bumps and takes the corners and we'll get on the uh, gas a little bit here at the bottom, show you guys a little acceleration. Let's do a little acceleration here. So just from a dead stop, feel a little bit of torque steer in the front end because it is primarily front wheel drive so you get a little bit of torque steer but it's it's not too noticeable only if you're on like full throttle okay so we're gonna get onto the freeway here and a lot of people may be concerned oh it's a it's a four banger it's a four cylinder it's too heavy it's not gonna have enough power to accelerate that is not the case let me show you guys what it can do we're gonna even be going uphill here we can easily get up to speed no problem this thing kicks butt so there we are, we're already at 60 miles an hour. I'm letting off the throttle. I cruise up the hill. Car's at 2,000 RPMs going uphill with no issues, plenty of torque. It doesn't have to rev, it doesn't make a lot of noise. The only noise you hear is the, the wind and a little bit of tire noise. Okay guys, so I wanted to test this. This is a pretty steep hill by my house. And I wanna just go from a stop here and show you guys this four cylinder has no issue. Easily accelerates up the hill. We're going 35 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, 2700 RPMs, it's going up the hill. It's still not too noisy for a four cylinder. Sometimes they whine and they make that buzzing sound. This has more of like a deep exhaust tone. So it doesn't really, I don't know, it doesn't bother me, which is nice. And this is quieter than our 3.7 liter MDX engine was going up that hill. It was much louder. So yeah, I think it's a, a great overall package. We've owned this car for nine months. I haven't regretted spending what we pay. I think the whole package was 41,000 for the setup that we have with all the features and options and with tax and everything, probably 46,000 was well worth the money, so wanted to show you guys just zero acceleration how fast it is it's fast there's 60 right there so not too bad for a 4400 pound SUV with a four cylinder and a turbo strap to it um, technology is always it's always nice to see technology improve. This outperforms V6s, and uh, it's, I mean, it's not the fastest. You can get 400 horsepower SUVs and less gas mileage, but this is, uh, yeah, it's a great package. I love this. I love this freaking car. Go test drive on it. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. If uh, you test drive this car, CX-9, test drive a CX-5, let me know what you guys think in the comments, which one's better. Am I right or am I wrong? I think I'm right. That's what I always tell my wife. Honey, I'm, I'm right, right? She usually says uh, no, but I always think I'm right. That is the lane keeping assist. So if we let it go over the line here in the road, see how that kicks up? You get a little bit of vibration, uh, feedback in the steering wheel, and the steering wheel actually will push the car back into the center of the road and away from the, the shoulder, which is a very nice feature. Blind spot monitoring detection there. While we're at it, why not test the parking sensors? Let's come into our spot here. 
see how it pops up on the screen here. Shows you where you're at. And stop. But now let's test the opposite. And this is the backup camera. It's got a wide angle view on it. So you can easily see where you're going. I love this camera compared to my Mazda 6. Um, resolution is much higher and it's a much wider view and it's a lot easier to see what you're doing and where you're going. Go ahead and park just using the backup camera. This does not have trajectory. If you get the Grand Touring, you get the trajectory that shows the lines move and tells you where you're going. But this still works really well. There we go. So yeah, for you guys that don't like to look over your shoulder and back up, the camera is more than adequate on this thing to help you park. And it works really good. Um, like I said, Grand Touring, you get 360 cameras. You can actually see all the way around you as well as the trajectory. This doesn't have that, but um, for the price, it works just good enough for us. And this is something that you guys will experience. If you drive a CX-5, go over like some curbs on a sidewalk. This thing soaks it up where the CX-5, the spring rate is so much different. It feels more like a car when you hit that bump. It is pretty harsh where this just soaks it up and gives you a nice comfy ride. So this is Apple Music with the Apple CarPlay. Has a great display. It sounds good. Don't sell yourself short. The screen on this isn't touchscreen even in park. Um, it's strictly all done by the jog wheel here. So you can push down on this to enter and scroll around. And it's uh, it's all pretty simple. You got a return button. You got your favorites here. Your different radio stations. Um, navigation, which doesn't work unless you have your phone connected to the car. Uh, you can also install a, a USB or a thumb drive into that. And I believe you can upload it just like the older Mazdas. Um, but that's not necessary. Everybody has a smartphone, either Android Auto or Apple CarPlay will work. Um, so yeah, there's videos on this, uh, how to use these jog wheels. I think it works really good myself because when you're driving, you don't have to reach forward and touch anything here. You strictly just leave your hand on the center console. Your hand is, with your elbow on the center console, your hand is automatically kind of in this area. So you just reach forward, you touch whatever section you want to go. You can easily keep your eyes on the road while you're looking at the screen. If you want to turn the volume up down, it's all just right here. Super simple to use. Anyway, guys, that's going to conclude our video today on the review of the 2021 Mazda CX-9 Touring. I hope you liked it. This is my first attempt in ever trying to review a car on this channel. Usually my car is about, my channel is about racing cars and working on cars. I figured uh, trying to do car reviews is a new way to get a wider audience to help my channel grow. So if you guys like this video, please leave me a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you like this type of content. And uh, thank you so much for watching if you guys made it this far. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out. Have a good one.